Hi everybody, welcome to another 10 minute tip from the OSINT Curious Project with me, Michael Hoffman. Today we're going to be working on some Linux command line or terminal window skills. Now these skills aren't necessarily OSINT focused, they are just skills that are going to help you uh, if you ever do need to work around on the Linux operating system in a terminal window. And they should work no matter what your distribution is. And by distribution, I mean what operating system you're using for your OSINT platform, whether it's Ubuntu or Mint, Buscador or Kali. The commands that I'm going to teach you uh, work on each. What will be different is how you access the terminal and what the colors and, and design and, and uh, fonts are. So here in my version of Ubuntu called Zubuntu, I'm going to click the little icon up here and go to Terminal Emulator. Now I've changed this window to be a uh, white background and black text and colorized text here so that it shows up better in the video. But many of these terminal windows are actually with a black background. It's easier on our eyes. So um, here in my system, I'm going to go ahead and show you the terminal. The terminal here tells me what, te what user I am. Here I'm tester. And what system? My system name is Ubuntu. That's my virtual machine. And then this is the prompt. So first thing we can do is check what the present working directory is, the PWD. That tells us what path on the system I'm at right now, in the what where what place on the system I'm at. This is the home tester directory or slash home slash tester directory. In Linux operating systems, the slash is the root level of the drive, kind of like the C drive. It is, if you go to C colon on a Windows system, then you are at the, the top level of that drive. Here, if you are at if the slash, then you're at the top level of that directory. Let's go ahead and check out what's in the directory by typing ls. ls uh, is a listing. L, uh, so Lima Sierra LS. That tells us to and tells us what files and directories are in the current place that we are in Home Tester. We have a folder or directory called Desktop, one called Documents, one called Downloads, and then we've got some files here: emails.txt, file1.txt. The way that I know that these are folders or directories and these are files is the colorization. Here I have a dark blue color and it's kind of bolded so that tells me it's a directory. If I type ls minus l then it gives me a long listing and it confirms yes these are directories because there's a little d right over here in the Linux permissions. These rwx's these are permissions. We're not going to get into permissions so much in this uh, video but I do want to show you the d's and the regular files. Cool. Now, there's something you should know that, um, like on Linux, on Windows and Mac systems, we can hide files here in Linux. And to reveal hidden files, we can use the same command, ls minus l, we can add another flag, the a command, the a flag. One of the other things I want to show you uh, in Linux, we have a way to bring up the past commands we typed. Now, typing ls minus l is really simple to do. And I know it's not a lot of characters, but as we move through the, the tutorial here, the 10 minute tip, there are gonna be some times when I'm just gonna hit the up arrow and you're gonna see the previous commands pop on the screen. We have up and down. So up moves you through the list of, of previous ones from the most recent to the, the, the least recent, and then the down will bring you back down the list. So here we have L, uh, ls minus l, ls and pwd. I'm just hitting the up and down arrows. And I can modify the command too. Remember how we said we wanted to add an a onto the end? ls minus la. Whoa, now we see a whole bunch of things. Scrolling up the window here with just the ls minus l command, we see we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight eight directories and two files. But once we say, show me all the hidden things, we see we have some other files here. We've got other directories. There's a whole bunch of extra things here. So 
when I'm doing my work around the system, there's actually some shortcuts that I use that are on most systems. Uh, these are called aliases. And what we can do is we can say we can map certain character combinations to different commands. If I type the word alias, my bash prompt here will tell me, or my bash command will tell me, hey, there's an alias for the word alert. If I type in alert, it will run this command. If I type in L, it runs LS minus capital C, capital F. If I run LL, I get it LS minus ALF. Let's try the LL. Type LL, and there we go. So this is equal to if I typed LS minus AL capital F. So these alias commands are things that you can set up. If there's commands that you're always going to run on the on the file system, or what some people will do is they will alias things like uh, if I type CP to copy, then I really want you to run CP minus V to va verify that uh, what I want to do. So so they'll put in an alias CP equals uh, quote CP minus V. Um, so we can edit that, and that can be edited in a bunch of places like your bash RC file which is right there. Now in Linux, when you put a period or a dot in front of a, a file or directory, that makes it hidden. And I'm using air quotes there because it's not really hidden. It's just not shown when we do a regular listing of the files. You add the A on the end and we can see that. Now, some of you are probably like, okay, well, how did you know there was an A? How did you know to do LS minus LA versus LS minus whatever? How do you how do you figure that out? Let me show you a couple of techniques. First, when we have the LS command, we can type double dash help. And we get a listing of all of the switches and flags you can provide. Many times this double dash help or simply dash H on some commands will give you those extra help of what it can, what you, uh, what you can type in. Here we have LS and then any options you want. If you want to list certain files, you can do that too. The square brackets are optional commands or option. So, sorry, so show you additional options that you can you can type, but you don't have to. So in its very simplest form, you can just type ls and it'll work. Sometimes we'll see required switches or flags here that you have to add. See this right here, the dash a, this was the ls minus a. This says do not ignore entries starting with a period. Ah, okay. But we have a whole bunch of other ones. Let's see what the l command does. LS minus L use long listing. Ooh, but there's a capital L that says when showing file information, blah, blah, blah. So there's a whole bunch of these. And what I t really suggest that you do is start doing the double dash help commands on the commands that you're running so you can understand what is the complete types of switches and flags that you can run. For instance, if we're interested in doing reverse listing, we can add an R. So I'm going to just go ahead and type LS minus L. You see we have desktop, documents, downloads, emails, whatever. If we add an R to it, now it's reverse sorted. Why would you want this? Well, let's say you had a whole directory full of uh, files and you just want to see the most recent one or that you wanted to see ones that were sorted differently, you can switch the sorting. We can do a bunch of other things here with LS as well, but let's see now how to get into one of these directories. Let's go into the desktop directory. All right, so here is the desktop directory and what we're going to do is change directory CD space desktop and hit enter. Now you can see our prompt changes. It says you're in this little squiggly line. This is a tilde, which means your home directory. So that's home tester, or yeah, home tester, um, slash desktop. And if I do an ls minus l here, there's no files. If I come over here and I create a folder, to, I'm gonna call this mica, I've created a folder. This is my desktop. <clears throat> I'm going to run the same command. Now we see the mica folder. See the mica directory right there? 
There you go. So you can see that we're accessing the same kind of content from two different places, either the terminal window or from the GUI. In fact, if we wanted to, we could just launch the file manager here, um, double click on desktop, and there's the MICA directory as well. All of this stuff is there. But you notice over here, by default, my file manager is not set up to show me the hidden files. I can add that by going in here. Let's see, advanced. Let's see, active view. I usually can go ahead and do that, but I don't know where the setting is to, to make this, um, to show the hidden files. There it is. Of course, here's the show hidden files. Now I can see all of those extra hidden files that we saw by using the ls minus la command. Okay. So we're working in the same place. This is not a magical separate area. It's just a different way of interacting with the system. All right, so we have covered PWD, LS, double dash help, CD, and using the up and down arrows to scroll through different directories. Until next time, I'm Michael Hoffman. I want you to stay awesome and curious.